Welcome to my parlor. <clears throat> oh, I mean, uh, welcome, traveler, to the Hidden Corner Finds. I am Joanne, and this is my humble store. Pull up a chair, stay a while, make yourself at home. What? Oh, you want to know what I'm selling? Everything and anything. <clears throat> I mean, uh, well, in short, I have a passion for peace. Ugh, why did it just bleep me? All I said was, I have a passion for picking, I said. Yeesh, you can't say anything on YouTube these days without this censorship. Anyways, as I was saying, I have a passion for picking. For me, there is nothing more satisfying than finding a unique and forgotten item and uniting it with someone who will really appreciate it for years to come. Whether it's a soapstone carving, an old book, or simply a mug to make you laugh, I try and find something for everyone. My goal is to make you a confident buyer. Older items often have a lifetime of stories to tell. I strive to describe the good as well as the bumps and bruises they've experienced along the way. It's important that the pictures reflect what you will receive. To that end, I always encourage questions and will do my best to respond as quick as possible. Appreciate you stopping by the store. If you can't find what you're looking for, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'm always looking for new ideas and will keep an eye out for your item in my travels. Honey, what the f happened to my action figure collection? Whoops, gotta go. Bye. And welcome back to Toy Thursday with Johnny Tiger on Thursday, April 11. Um, today we are going to celebrate National Pets Day. Be nice to your pet. If you, I, I, I hope you have pet. I think um, pet does so much. Well, pets do so much for people, especially those of us who live on our own. Uh, it makes the whole world a different. Of course, it comes with a whole bunch of obligations and financial and time commitment and all that stuff. But in the end, the amount of joy and comfort they'll bring you is all worth it. Um, in, uh, the National Pet Day was uh, started by Colleen Page back in 2003. Uh, it's a day to celebrate, well, those little furry, fuzzy, scaly, uh, flapping, whatever pet you prefer, little companions in your life. Uh, so, get this in that spirit today, we are going to both look at an animal figure, uh, but also we are going to take a look at an animal fi figure, that an animal character that have a pet of his own. We are going to look at the very super ultra badass combination uh, from Stan Winston's Realm of the Claw. Last time when we looked at the Realm of the Claw action figure, we looked at the Elder Nakuru, who was the Elder for the good guy's side. Today we are going to look at the, his counterpart. Uh, today we are going to look at Saber, or as I prefer to say, Samar, uh, from the evil side. Samar is the Elder from the evil side. And if Nakuru was badass looking, Sabar is ten times as wicked. So, without further ado, let's adjourn to my filming table and we'll look at Sabar and his lovely pet. Now, we don't usually start by looking at the display base of the action figure unless the display base is something to write home about. Uh, and this case, because the pet we are celebrating is attached to the display base. So we are looking at the display base first. Like all the Realm of the Claw Stan Winston action figures, uh, Sabar comes with a very large, very detailed display base. And his is probably the largest and the coolest of them all. Uh, although that one is definitely up for debate. Some people like this one, some people don't. Um, First and foremost, we have his pet, uh, this giant cobra that is part of the display base. Now, uh, part of the snake, like right here on the bottom, this is sculpted to the display base, but 
or is it no maybe not sculpted it's more like glued um and then the top part the the part that's sticking up this is bendy okay this is a got bendy wire inside so you can pose it however you like and then i always thought the head should move but it doesn't um or maybe it does and i just too chicken shit to try to force it um the jaw is open unfortunately not hinged but this is such a cool looking cobra right um really big too like if this thing can detach from the base this would be like even bigger than that uh the genie snake from harry potter's uh uh lord voldemort and the snake got a jeweled collar around its neck just so you know that this is not any wild snake this is a snake that have a has an owner and it has a chain attached to the collar I don't think this is real metal chain, although it might be. Uh, and this chain can clip onto uh, or hook onto a little hook on Sabar's belt. Uh, well, I'm going to show you guys that later. But let's finish looking at the base because this base, like I said, is really big. Okay, this base, this is my hand for reference, and the base is larger than my hand spread out. So this is a very large base. It has two foot pegs to hold him up uh, and the cobra attached to the base and it depicts a section of ground that is all cracked and uh, baked uh, like a volcano part of the volcano and you can see magma coming out of the ground in several places and there are skeletons like you see it right in the coil of the snake you can see the bones there, a rib cage, rib cage there. What is that over there? Like an arm bone, and the left side. Um, more bones over here by the snake's upper body. So it's like a desolate, scorched piece of ground with magma. A giant snake and some bones and ribcage. So yeah, our boy Sabar definitely knows how to uh, pick his uh, entrance. He he got a nice, intimidating piece of ground that make him look really badass. And speaking of badass, Sabar is a very badass cat himself. Well, I'm going to uh, take one more spin with the snake. It's a bandy, like I said, you can pose him however you like. And then we are going to bring in his owner, the Elder Sabar, who is the evil elder in Realm of the Claw. And we are going to go over his rather short bio when we bring him in. The Elder Sabar leads a younger and more powerful terror on his quest for domination, training his younger disciple in taking over the animal world. So, Sabar is uh, sort of the advisor, uh, the corrupter to the younger, uh, younger prince, I guess you can call it. Although I, I find it interesting that in the uh, story in the bio, that it uh, says that terror is stronger than Sabar. Like, come I mean, here, look at this guy. Sabar, like, I don't know. I don't know. I've seen, I have terror figure. So I don't know why they would say terror is stronger than, more powerful than Sabar, unless there's something magical involved. But it, the terror's action, terror's action figure definitely doesn't look like he's going to be able to go up against Sabar. Um, Sabar might be old, but he is the biggest of all the cats in Realm of the Claw. He's like incredible Hulk size. I, I didn't want to uh, go grab my uh, Wayne the Blade Master Tiger Warrior, but 
if I grab that guy and strip him down, because it's not fair for him to have his, all his gear on for comparison, but if I strip him down, you'll find that this Sabar would be very close to that size, right? The, the, and Sabar, in some way, is built even bigger, because he, he has a really thick, powerful legs and arms. Like, this is one powerful-looking elder. <laughs> I mentioned when we did Nakuru that Nakuru looked like an old cat that is still really super strong. Say, uh, Sabar here is in a whole different league, right? Sabar is like in the Incredible Hulk league, uh, all on his own. Um, so, anyway, uh, like I said, in the story, he is the advisor and teacher to the younger prince, uh, but Honestly, in my head story, in my own story, he would be the ultimate bad guy. Like, he looked like the ultimate bad guy. Sabar, as his name would suggest, is a saber-toothed tiger. And yes, yes, before you guys say it, I know that it's saber-toothed cat, not saber-toothed tiger. But in this guy's case, he's clearly going for saber-toothed tiger. He got a big, long saber tooth. tigerish face and he also has tiger style stripes so if you discount the saber tooth then he's a tiger okay now to be fair something interesting here is um, they made his stripes look like they are tattoos on his skin rather than something that actually come naturally so maybe he didn't have them. Maybe he, he uh, tattooed them on uh, as a tribal s status or something. I don't know. Okay, give him a slow spin on his display base. Just such a cool looking figure. He also is probably the most naked of all the cats. And I mean, come on. If, if you have this body build, would you really want to cover that up with clothes? So he has this little bit of armor on his shoulder, kind of this fringe uh, harness, chest plate. It's not a chest plate. I mean, this, this is like mostly tatters, like strips of leather hanging down in front of his chest. Uh, and then let me take him off his base. As you guys can hopefully see, the chain from the cobra hook on right here on the belt move his arm out of the way right here on the belt so i'm going to unhook this so i can move him a little bit freely without breaking the chain so his stomach his back most of this is like just fur he's got no no armor on he got a loin cloth and a bit of a armor around his waist Turning him around, he has almost no tail. He has a stubby little short tail. So at least that part, he's not really like a tiger. Um, powerful, powerful size. This big, chunky size. Uh, why are there spikes and like hooks? Oh, okay, okay. There's a piece of armor on his, uh, on his left side there with some shredder style hooks coming out i wasn't sure why why our tiger would have uh, spikes growing out of his side but uh yeah it's a piece of armor over there and then he has these uh, big spiky shin guard on his uh, around his shin oh okay so it's not really a shin guard it's like a just a, a piece of knee knee armor and it's only on his uh, right knee. If you look, his uh, left knee, left shin is totally bare. And then you see his uh, thick, chunky tiger paw. Right. Uh, again, his arms are mostly bare. Um, there's a, on his right arm, there's a kind of a piece of, like a bracelet around his right wrist. But yeah, you see like all this amazing muscular details and furs on his uh, arm, like that is really cool. 
and the left arm there's a little bit more going on. There's actually a like a upper arm armband and the left arm and the forearm bracer that yeah that looks like it's going to hurt if he's backhand you with that. But I mean as if him being a tiger ouch as him being a tiger is not bad enough. One thing I will mention uh, with these realms the claw figure their claws really really sharp. Like I just grab his hand and uh, this claw here and his thumb dug into my skin. That hurts. <laughs> that that hurts. From an action figure, that uh, that's crazy how sharp that is. Okay. Now I'm gonna uh, actually before I put him on his base. So like all the realm of the claw figures, Sabar comes with two head. We have this one head that is uh, I can say the nicer friendlier head is like nice kitty and then we have this open mouth really angry I'm going to bite your face off head like yeah now this guy is going to get serious okay putting him back on his face for a second here is a uh, Sabar with his pet snake. Like that. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I kind of get a Jungle Book vibe out of, uh, out of this too. Like, Shere Khan walking car on a leash. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I know I'm kind of dorky that way, but yeah, it, that totally give me that vibe. It's like those two uh, just out for a walk, and I mean, that big, powerful saber tooth uh, tiger definitely give me the Shere Khan vibe. And then, you know, he's walking a giant snake on the leash. So, um, before we do anything else, I want to uh, quickly go over his articulation. Now, I love these Stan Winston action figures. I know a lot of people said they were too expensive, but really, I mean, this guy was like nine bucks, eight bucks, nine bucks back in like 2001, 2002. Come with this giant snake, this giant base, this giant tiger action figure. Uh, yeah, I don't think he's too expensive. I think even nowadays, if you sell him for 60 bucks, I would still say he's a really good figure. Um, so. Another reason why I really love these Stan Winston figures is even though they didn't have a lot of articulation, they had a lot more functional articulation than, say, McFarlane or NECA. And the beautiful thing is, uh, I don't really worry about moving them. Even though they're over 20 years old, these are just some really durable. Actually, earlier, uh, Sabar actually fell off the desk onto the floor. and. Uh, that that that, uh, that didn't break anything it was like so satisfying to have an old figure that is durable so to start off we have ball jointed head with good up and down range well down not so much but uh, definitely go up really far uh, and side to side and then we have on these big shoulders we have big ball jointed shoulder so he can get some T pose or what well not full T pose because unfortunately he doesn't have elbow or knee joints so his arms are a little bit pre posed. Um there's no upper bicep joint in the right arm but in the left arm where the arm band is you can get a bicep turn. Right? Unfortunately, that arm is also permanently stuck in a bent position. Uh, there's joint at the wrist, but as you can see, because the wrists are in this pre-posed, curled in position, when you turn the wrist, it, it looks a bit weird. Um, same with this one. Ah, sharp nail. Okay, and his uh, upper torso hinges back and forth, waist turn, side to side, ball jointed hips, can kick back and forward and to the side, 
almost do a full split. We don't want to see that. Uh, like I said, no bend in the knee, but there is like a hinge and like a hinge and rocker, almost ball jointed ankle. Like his ankle movements are really pretty good. Now, like most of the uh, Realm of the Claw figure, he doesn't stand very good because he's, uh, you know, he got uh, these cat style degenerate legs. Uh, and he his feet are kind of small compared to his body size. So when you try to stand him, unless you balance him just right, he's going to tip forward or back. Uh, so thank God he comes with the base. Um, put him on his base. But even on his base, ooh, why did he? Why did they put his foot pack so foot pack so wide apart? So he's always have to. Do that such a wide-legged stance. Um, even on the stance, uh, on the display base, if you don't pose him just right, he will tip. He will uh, fall over. Like the the ankle joint uh, will start to let him sag after a while. Uh, so you got to make sure you uh, uh, have him balanced just right. Uh, for accessories, other than this cool snake uh, display base. He comes with this skull. This is a creepy little thing. Uh, this skull look like a monkey skull. So it's like he murdered a monkey or a caveman or something. Uh, and he can kind of hold it like this in his uh, pinch it between his uh, thumb and uh, claw like this, or I haven't actually gotten this to work, but I think if you position this just right, where did it go? <laughs> it it it's, uh, just oh, rolled off. Um, if you position this just right, you can probably get the snake to hold it in its mouth. There you go, there we go. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want to stay. But uh, anyway, that gives you guys an idea of uh, how that skull can work. Okay, I had to uh, take like two minutes off to get a position just right. But yeah, uh, you, if you anchor the edge of the skull in the upper fang, and then you get the lower jaw, against the eye socket, uh, then you can get it to grip like that. It's not a very tight grip, so if you bump it, it's going to roll off. But it does look pretty cool, right? Uh, this skull is a creepy thing because it ha it's, for some reason, made of a really rubbery material. So when you feel it, it's like gummy, like a gummy bear. It's like a gummy, gummy bear skull. It's really weird. Uh, so in addition to the skull, we'll uh, take that from the snake. Well, you can you can put this on the base, like inside that little rib cage on the base too. Okay. Um, in addition to the skull, he comes with a couple of weapons. Come with this big, mean-looking, like a push dagger, punch dagger thing. Well, to any other people, it would be like a short sword, but in his hand, it's just a dagger. So he can, he this is this is meant to go into his uh, right hand because that's the only hand that is open enough to hold it. So you just slide that in, and then you pull it slow, just a little bit forward, so the handlebar sits inside uh, his claw, and or you push it back a little bit so the back end sit seat against his thumb and yeah it's not again it's not a very tight grip but he he look wicked with that like i i like that um for someone like this i think this is a great weapon because you have a super powerful looking character right like he doesn't need a giant sword or a giant axe uh even though that would showcase his strengths but I think that having a really quick, 
close range brutal looking weapon like this、uh, can showcase his speed and ferocity in close quarter combat as well. Okay,、uh, so with this, I like to pose it off to the side like that.、Okay? And then he comes with one larger weapon. There's a long spear, and this spear is like tipped off with some like a giant fang. From some monster, like where did he get that from? What kind of animal could he have killed to make this? Like, did he kill a dragon? Like, like that? What what animal? Like, do or maybe it's a like an elephant? I don't know. Like so. Anyway, this one go into his、uh, left hand because that one、uh, is has the right grip for it, and it's this is taller than him. Like this. I I think this、uh, I didn't bring my ruler in here, but this spear have to be close to ten inches long. Like it, it it's taller than than this guy, and this guy is already pretty tall. Ah,、uh, so he got a really long spear and a big ass dagger knife thing. Ah,、uh, a pet cobra. A really cool display base with a bunch of bones. Are those his victims, or did he just like pick this part as a, a like a sacrificial ground or something? You know, you use your own story and imagination, right? Um, this is just overall a super super cool figure. Uh, like Realm of the Cloth, some of my favorite figures in my collection, and Sabar is my favorite figure from. Realm of the Claw. Of course, he's a tiger. He's saber tooth cat, saber tooth tiger. I'm kind of biased toward anything tiger. Anyway, so、uh, now let's do a quick size comparison. We're going to bring in, of course, our standard.、Uh, first, we'll bring in Captain America. Uh, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Even, even the snake is like taller than Captain America. And you stand Captain America with a sabar here. Who? That's that's a really big, really big size difference. Yeah, sabar looks like he can take Captain America with one arm tied behind his back. And now I'm going to take him off his base for the next comparison because this comparison you'll only really get the full effect if I have him stand more upright because on his base he has this really wide-legged、uh, open leg, almost like a crouch,、uh, so he he looks shorter. Okay, so I'm going to unfortunately he can't really. Stand fully upright because of the shape of his leg, and there's no knee joint.、Uh, but this this is as tall as you're going to get him.、Uh, and I'm going to bring in this guy, the Incredible Hulk. Okay, they could be brothers. Like they they're so close in size. Look at this, Incredible Hulk meets Savar. Okay, have a nice.、Uh, Brotherly hug. <laughs> Look at that! Like the the these two are almost equal in size. Okay, the Hulk might be just a tad beefier, but I don't know. I I I think they're very very comparable in、uh, body size. Before we end the video, we are going to、uh, bring in the those animal、uh, jungle guys in the background. For a group shot. So here we have a group of、uh, just random jungle warriors thrown together.、Um, from the right to left, well,、uh, we have Gorilla Grodd, 
this is a uh, McFarlane's DC Gaming version. The first time I uh, got this guy, I knew I was going to display him with my Animal Warriors and not my DC villains because with that golden medieval looking armor, he looked more like he belonged with the uh, uh, Animal Warriors. So beside him, we have Beast Man from um, Master of the Universe, Masterverse from Mattel. And then in the middle, we have Sabar. And to his uh, other side, on the very left, we have uh, Mythic Legion's own Cat Warrior Purpler over here. And these Mythic Legion guys are normally very considered quite large, but we can see that next to Sabar, Purpler looks small. Like, it, it, it's it's kind of interesting when you look at these uh, side by side and you realize uh, how big of a size different uh, Sabar makes. Like just being a big hulking safer to Tiger Warrior. And of course that pet snake on the chain uh, looks almost like another action figure. It, it's actually very tall. Uh, the the snake is, I think it's as tall as Sabar. Um, you know, rearing up from the uh, base the way it is. So there it is, folks. We have our uh, look at Sabar and his pet snake from Realm of the Claw by the uh, dearly departed Stan Winston himself. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I'll be back again tomorrow for some Fitness Friday.